Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today's Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you would like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Cosmic Tortilla, who says, The full American loadout will be using the BAR 1918 with the Doughboy 1911. Regular grenade any support gadgets you want, and a shovel. This is a very straightforward loadout and one that I would highly recommend using as soon as you unlock the BAR. In fact, this is probably one of my ideal ways to run with the support class. Now, one of the downsides of the BAR is that it has a very small magazine of 20 rounds, which means chances are you're only gonna kill one person per mag before needing to reload, which means you're not gonna go on as crazy of kill streaks as you might with some of the other machine guns. It's sort of get in there, do a little bit of damage, retreat, reload, get in there again, do a little more damage, retreat, reload. You really don't have the same stopping power as an assault player. Now, despite the BAR being one of the highest damage per second machine guns available in the game, it's still incredibly underpowered compared to either assault weapons or just what you might have expected from previous Battlefield games. To put it in perspective, the highest damaging machine gun in Battlefield 1, the BAR, does less damage than the lowest DPS weapon I could find in Battlefield 4 which as far as I can tell for a fully automatic weapon was the PP2000 and that one does significantly more damage, has better hip fire and has a huge magazine of 45 rounds instead of 20 that you get with the BAR. So we've talked about this a little bit before that Battlefield 1 has a much slower damage model, much slower damage per second, which makes certain weapons like shotguns or sniper rifles really start to stand out because they didn't get as much of a nerf as the automatic weapons did. Now on the plus side, it makes the Scout class much more usable there's a lot more uh, bolt action and lever action rifles in the game if you like that. A lot of people don't like the quantity of it, but it is, for the most part, more authentic because of it. Um, so there, there's different ways of really looking at that situation. Personally, I think because the highest damaging per second machine gun does way less damage than the lowest damaging per second uh, SMG in Battlefield 1, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to try and use the support class in close quarters at all, which is really unfortunate because you almost always end up in close quarters at some point. And I think DICE could definitely relook at some of the damage models for the LMGs. They don't have to out damage SMGs in close quarters or anything or be more usable, but um, I think they need some sort of damage tweak to bring them in line just a little bit. And based on what I've seen so far from community reaction to weapon balance and whatnot, most of the community seems to agree that LMGs could use a bit of a damage buff or something like that just to make them a little bit more effective. That being said, the BAR is fun to use, but you have to know your place. You can't really be on the front lines as much. The problem in games like this is that you often find yourself on the front lines, especially if you're a more aggressive player um, and your squad goes down around you or people are dying, you're going to be on the front lines. People are going to be charging you. You have to stop them. And if you're playing support class uh, defensively and you're actually in a trench playing defensively, people are going to come running up right in your face and you're going to need a weapon that can damage them down. And the thing that really balances out this class right now for having relatively crappy primary weapons is it's got the best gadget in the game, the Air Burst Mortar. And if you're not familiar with this gadget yet, then you haven't played Battlefield 1. I mean it literally, you haven't played Battlefield 1 unless you've been killed by the Air Burst Mortar uh, at least 10 times because it's going to be on every map, just about every clip of gameplay I have here, I can see an Air Burst flying through the air. They're just so damn effective. You don't have to put yourself in line of sight. They come crashing down, do tons of splash damage in an area, will wipe out entire squads of baddies. It's a very easy way to get kills and a very effective way to get kills. I use it because it's very effective right now, although I do think it needs a little bit of a nerf. In fact, I think it would be great to try and balance out the support class by buffing the machine guns a little bit and nerfing the air burst mortar. That would make it less of an indirect fire class and more of an actual supporting class and furthermore the support class can rearm itself with grenades so basically you get two really good indirect fire weapons one of which uh, you can rearm yourself with pretty frequently so basically uh, you get grenades you get the air burst mortar the support class doesn't have to expose itself to direct fire too frequently which is nice because it has the weakest direct fire weapons in the game currently but it also kind of focuses
focuses on an indirect fire style of gameplay, which can be really frustrating to play against. I mean, I don't think I've ever been killed by an airburst mortar and been like, oh, that guy got me, he outsmarted me, or outplayed me. There's not a lot of skill to the airburst mortar. It's pretty straightforward. You see people on the minimap, you fire there, you kill them, or you fire in a round and see where the enemies are hiding because you can follow in your rounds with the camera, and then you just adjust your aim accordingly, and it's pretty darn easy to get kills from there on out. When you run out of air burst, then you can run in, throw a grenade, and finally subject yourself to direct fire. Now let's talk a little bit about the BAR. The way I like to run it is with the Storm variant, as that reduces the recoil as much as possible, allows me to get my sights on target. Then I'm running the anti-air sights on this weapon, which I think are relatively easy to use. They look stupid, I'll admit. I don't really like the look of the sights. I prefer the look of the iron sights, but if I'm trying to be effective, then I'll throw the anti-air sights on there and try and make it a little bit easier to aim this beast. Now, you can run with the other variants of the BAR, but I think having lesser recoil so you can try and ADS as best as possible uh, is the most beneficial to me personally. The hip fire on this weapon isn't too terrible either, so if somebody gets right up in your face, there's no point in really aiming down sights. You should be able to take him out with hip fire all right. The 1911 also makes a great sidearm backup. I think I'm preaching about this sidearm in just about every single video I use. At the moment, I don't really see a reason to use a lot of other sidearms in the game because the 1911 is a universal weapon. You can slap it on any class and it's effective. It's good with just about any gun pairing. You could make an argument with the scout class to use something else that complements the specific rifle you have, but for the most part, I don't think you're gonna be underperforming with the 1911. Now, I definitely played a lot of operations while capturing this gameplay. It's quickly becoming, or it already has become, my favorite game mode. Uh, in fact, I'm really not drawn to play the other game modes as much because this one offers the most intense team oriented action, lots of like just in your face combat all the time, and you can play the objective while also getting a ton of kills. My favorite combination of things. Plus, it's the best game mode to fly on if you so happen to enjoy aircraft, which I do a lot. And I'll probably be making a video on that in the near future as I'm about to hit rank 10 with a pilot. Once again, I think DICE reset that at one point during the game or changed the amount of points required to hit rank 10. So I hit rank 10, got the rank 10 unlocks, uh, which were some like airplane skins and stuff, and then it reset so I don't have the airplane skins anymore. But I'm about to get them back once again. Now I've noticed that there's been a pretty big difference in making loadouts for Battlefield 1 compared to Battlefield 4, especially at the launch of the game. Now when Battlefield 4 launched, people were requesting all kinds of exotic guns with weird attachments and specifications to them, and I'd have to play a long time just to get those guns and then unlock the attachments for them by getting even more kills. So it was a pretty hefty requirement, at least in the start, to get all the unlocks just to make a single loadout video. Now in Battlefield 1, I've pretty much unlocked everything in the game. In fact, I have literally unlocked everything in the game at this point, and I'm only in my mid-70s as far as my rank goes. So it didn't take me very long to get everything I needed unlocked in Battlefield 1, which is both good and bad. Good in the sense that I can explore with everything and not feel like uh, I, I'm being outplayed by weapons that I don't have, but bad on the, in the sense that I didn't feel like a huge sense of progression or difficulty to unlock all of these items in the game. The progression system in Battlefield 1 has really been lacking, unfortunately, and I'm really curious to see how this plays out in the long run. Giving everybody access to all the different weapons and attachments without much work isn't necessarily that big of a deal, but we'll have to see how it plays out, especially in the aesthetic realm. Will the somewhat lacking progression system in this game hurt the longevity or people's interest to play it for long periods of time? I hope not. The gameplay itself is incredible, and DICE can always do some work to try and improve their progression system now that the game is out. Anyway, as far as this loadout goes, it's pretty much my ideal setup for the support class. The only thing I would change is the shovel, although the shovel is a fun melee weapon. I did find myself, now that I'm used to being able to break barbed wire with my hatchet, really um, missing that ability as the, it's pretty useful. I find myself breaking a lot of barbed wire and flanking using that mechanic. So that's the one thing I would change. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your comments down below for next week's episode, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.